Welcome back to the Fit for Racing and Fox Racing workout of the week. This week we've got a super simple workout for you. All you need is a wall and a place to do press-ups. The idea here is you're not against the clock, you're against reps for yourself. You're going to count 10 seconds in a ski sit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then fall forwards into one press-up. Walk your hands back. You don't need to change your foot position. That's going to help get transitions faster. 10 seconds again. One, two press-ups and back. 10 seconds again. And you keep going until either your legs give up or your press-ups give up. But either way, you can identify what your weak area is that's going to determine how good you are on the bike. Comment your scores below, see what I got to, and I'll see you next week. Peace. We love rowing for mountain bikers. It might seem contradictory because we're not getting pedal power as you'd expect on a turbo trainer. However, we're getting lots of hinging, which is amazing, and upper mid back engagement. Make it even more specific for mountain biking by putting one foot on and the other on the ground and driving on 10, to build strength endurance in that split stance that we know is so good for downhill riding. Do 10 pulls each side, an equal number per session. What I suggest is 500 meter intervals with a couple of minutes off in between, and that will get better strength endurance in the legs for mountain biking. Peace. Mountain bikers notoriously have funky shoulders probably because of the position that they're in and being untrained in the upper mid back. Mobility with a towel can help that. Everyone has access to a towel. Take it with straight elbows, go over your head down to the back, trying not to bend the elbows at all. Rotate through this for 30 seconds, then go out to the side into what we call a kayak. Rotations one direction for 30 seconds, then the other for 30 seconds. That'll be general mobility through the shoulder. And then for a good stretch through the lat and tricep, hold the towel, pull down, hold for two minutes if it's after training or 30 seconds if it's before to lengthen and help that position so that you don't get more funky whilst riding and training. Peace. Rotator cuff strengthening doesn't have to be a band in this kind of fashion all day long. Actually, the loading of that isn't great. It's good for rehab, but if you want to actually strengthen before you get injured, try this with a dumbbell. We start off in an externally rotated arm and then turn it up like a backwards telephone, a halo around the head, back to the starting position, and then a halo the other direction. Do that 10 times each side three times, and over time, you can increase the weight like proper strength training, and not just what you see from the physio with a band that's not gonna get you strong, may protect you and rehab you, but what we want is strong, impact resistant rotator cuff inside that shoulder. Peace. <laughs> 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 Lunges are so good for cyclists, particularly mountain bikers, because they're building strength in a different way without the load on the lower back. However, they can be quite dangerous when you're doing max weight, because in this position, when you get stuck, you can't push the bar back because you might land on your heel. So instead, swap from this type of lunge to a front rack lunge, which will encourage more strength through the upper mid back. Bah! And then when you get stuck, and you bail out, it's nice and safe, but more athletic, and that's what we want for mountain bikers. Athleticism, not just strength training. Peace. Strength training is really important for mountain bikers, but the question is, do you stretch before or after training, or both? Well, the reality is that stretching can actually weaken your muscle, so you can perform less weight. The science behind that, however, what that science doesn't account for is positions. If you don't stretch before squatting, then you can't reach an optimal range of motion, but ultimately 
If you get stuck in this semi-squat position, the load is more on your lower back. So to stretch first makes sense to reach positions that are optimal for athleticism. So it's not just about how much your muscle can push, but the positions that it can push from. And by mobilizing beforehand, particularly in the squat position that we're going to achieve during the weighted movement, then two minutes in a lengthening stretch in each position could actually help you achieve more on a maximal weight, even though your muscles are slightly less strong or weaker. <laughs> Got it. Lunge jump, curtsy squat. Ski hop, lunge jump, curtsy squat twice. This simple complex over the bench is gonna build speed, power, and capacity ooh, that directly reflects into your mountain biking. Ah, exactly what I want, perfect workout, just on a bench. <laughs> Side planks on a straight arm are fantastic to build stability through the shoulder and obviously core for mountain bikers. However, you can make it better by adding a band for more instability, which encourages core activation and control. And while you have the band there, do as long as you can on one side, and then flip over into this super gymnastic -y position with toes pointed and hit as many pumps as you can. The straight arm plank position, encouraging more core activation and goodness before then swapping to the other side. For more instability and better mountain biking. Peace. <laughs> it's that time of year where mountain bikers should be testing absolute strength. But when you're doing a test like a deadlift, let's talk about the difference between an absolute max and a technical max. An absolute max would be super fucking heavy and your backgrounds and I say, I'm gonna kill all of your family if you don't lift this and you do it absolutely do it it's only 40 kilos you're not going to kill yourself <laughs> awful you might do some bro fist bumps because you pb'd your deadlift but you also pb'd all the hernias in your lower back instead look at a technical max back down where if it gets too heavy you start pulling off the ground and you get flexion of the spine you absolutely stop that means that you're at the detriment of your core stability not all of the funky shit that you get up to doing a PB for an absolute max. Because ultimately, when you start using the flexion of your spine to lift the weight on a mega max, you lose all of the connection through your glutes and your hamstrings, which are the muscles that we want to be working during the deadlift while we're training. If your core's too weak to get heavy weights, then work your core more before you start deadlifting like the bros. Peace. When we're talking about good strong positions on the bike, the hinge here with one leg forwards replicating feet on the pedal is really important to build absolute strength. But from there, we want relatable strength and speed. So holding a dumbbell and then extending through the hip and locking out the very top encourages momentum in the starting position to replicate where you're at on the pedal. Bam! To blast up, to help for pumping and taking off. And as you get stronger, the weight can get heavier, hitting either reps of six for ultimate speed and power, or in a conditioning workout, up to 15, bam, as heavy as you can, whilst maintaining control and obviously safety, bam. So think about positions on the bike, and usable functional strength for mountain biking. Peace. <laughs> and then cut. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> for riding mountain bikes, we need the posterior to function well. Quite often we'll do deadlifts, etc., and it hits the hamstrings, but not the glutes. The glutes are there to stabilize the pelvis and by working them well in single leg movements, unilateral like the single leg deadlift, 
We're going to work that balance of the hips. Can help with lower back pain, but more so for performance. If you want to up the ante and get even better, then we can use that same position in the front leg, but stabilize on the back leg and hit some single arm swings, which generates a lot more speed and power, which is transferable to the movements you're going to be doing on the bike, which is exactly what we're trying to do here. Peace. Hanging from a bar is fantastic for grip, which is great for mountain biking. But when we want healthy shoulders too, try this. Let go with one arm, stabilize. You can allow yourself to twist, maybe 10 seconds, one side. Put your other hand on, 10 seconds the other, with the rotation through. This way, we're working mobility as our shoulders were designed to, not just strength. We want them to be functional, moving, and then protecting from any kind of analogy might come up against on the bike but ultimately the control and stabilization which helps your performance. Boost. <laughs>